Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Um, a lot of you who have subscribed have um, hit that button for my NASM video. I uh, get a lot of messages on here, questions on here, and through my Instagram. Uh, if you want more advice and just tips on how to actually pass the test, go ahead and hit the subscription button and the bell notification so you get notified anytime I do upload. So one of the biggest questions or the most frequently asked question I get, it, it's on the overhead squat assessment. Uh, I feel like a lot of people stress out about this more than they have to, just basing it off when I took the test. Uh, it definitely came up on there, but I wouldn't if you were like cramming for it and you don't have much time and you keep going back to the overhead squat assessment, I wouldn't waste a whole lot of time making sure you memorize every single muscle that's overactive and underactive. Uh, what I'm going to go through today, I film myself doing, or my girlfriend filmed me doing um, the overhead squat assessment and just the different views, the anterior and lateral view. And then also just the compensations and what you should look for with each of those views, uh, like it says in the book. So I'm going based off the book. This is uh, a test that I use pretty much any time I'm working with someone new um, with my business, with a, in a gym, wherever. Anytime I've ever been training with someone I just met them, I always check how their squat looks because that's going to tell you a lot about how their body's moving. So... The test is designed to test their dynamic flexibility, core strength, uh, neuromuscular uh, activity, and just it's going to give you a really good idea of what they need to work on. And this is a really good way to make a sale because not a lot of people can do an overhead squat um, right off the bat. And you don't want to scare them and say something's wrong with them, but definitely being able to point out what areas of their body are overactive and underactive and have them put that into like what they're doing their routine and you see a little light bulb go off in their head like wow that that I actually am really tight in that area or I don't use that muscle that often so it's very beneficial and uh, it is something every trainer should apply to their onboarding session or complimentary session whatever you call it depending if you're working in a corporate gym or you're just an independent trainer uh, it is something you should definitely start trying if you're not doing it and if you're becoming a trainer just get it in your head now that it's something that you're gonna wanna do going forward with um, your upcoming clients I know in the book they have the pictures uh, of what you should look for and I know for me seeing videos with a lot of the material in here was a lot more helpful than just reading some pages out of the book and trying to apply it to something that's real life so what I'm going to do now is go over the videos that I have filmed just of myself doing it and something I'm going to point out it was actually pretty hard to do it the wrong way after you know how to squat the right way uh, and that's something to think about with someone who doesn't know how to squat um, and them trying to do it the right way how it is a challenge for them, especially if it's just completely opposite of what they've been doing throughout their whole life or they just started working out, they think they know what they're doing, then they finally meet with you and you have to critique them, critique them with all these different things. It can be super overwhelming, so best thing to do is just be very patient with them and just let them mess up and correct it step by step by step don't try to fix it all at once because there's a lot of compensations that are going to happen I, especially the people who are like sitting all day and they work in an office and they don't really go to the gym a whole lot they're going to buy training with you and only be working with you these are the people that are going to have a lot of different compensations so uh, what i'm going to go through now is just the videos and We'll talk about what muscles are overactive and underactive so you can have a little bit more visual um, video here and just something else to help you guys study and pass the test. All right, so first we're going to look at the lateral view here. It's important that you look from both views. Laterally, you're going to be standing on the side of your client just so you can check whether they're arching the lower back, see the pelvis uh, if it's going forward backwards 
and the anterior view you're looking at them head on so this is more for looking at the feet turning out or if they're going to have that knee valgus which is just the knees going inward all right so as i go through all this just keep in mind that you'll see a lot of the same muscles with different compensations so you're gonna see glute maximus come up as overactive and underactive for a lot of different things here and i don't want you to get confused by that just know you can have overactive and underactive muscles depending who you are everyone's different there's a different blueprint for everybody so just keep that in mind when you are assessing your clients so arms fall forward uh, we're going to show the video here quick of what that might look like it's going to look different for different people keep that in mind as well so the probable overactive muscles are going to be the latissimus dorsi seen here in the picture teres major and the pec major and also the pec minor so now we're going to look at the underactive muscles so video quick you're going to get the mid and lower trapezius rhomboids and also the rotator cuff so a lot of different muscles in there supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis excessive forward lean video you can see here arms still stay kind of ahead above the head but you still go way too far forward the overactives are the soleus and gastroc hip flexor complex and the abdominal complex video one more time so we can do that going into the underactive muscles anterior tibialis the gluteus maximus and the erector spinae lower back arches see that curve in probable overactive muscles the hip flexor complex so you're seeing here a couple repeats next you're going to have the erector spinae again and the latissimus dorsi so lower arch of the back again going to go into the underactive muscles the gluteus maximus the hamstring complex and all the core stabilizers lower back rounds this one is actually kind of hard for me to do you can see there it's a little bit more rounding you'll probably see the overactives will be the hamstring complex and also the rectus abdominis so again kind of hard for me to round that keep an eye out for a more of a round underactive it's going to be those core stabilizers gluteus maximus and also the erector spinae again so knee valgus uh, this is just where the knees go inward this can result into some serious knee injuries if it's not fixed and you just keep loading weight with that situation going on the overactive muscles adductor complex soleus and gastrocnemius bicep femoris short head the tfl and also the vastus lateralis keep in mind when you're looking at this uh, for the knee valgus you want to be standing in the anterior position so you can see them head on uh, so you can actually identify those knees going in closer together so the underactive muscles gluteus medius and maximus and also the vastus medialis oblique vmo feet turn out you 
see here, just as they go down, kind of put the weight on the heels, feet go out. The overactive muscles with this are going to be the soleus, the lateral gastrocnemius, and the short head of the bicep femoris. It's so going into the underactive muscles of the feet, turning out another anterior view. Probable underactives are going to be the medial gastrocnemius, the medial hamstring complex, the gracilis, sartorius, and the popliteus. Right, so that's everything that I wanted to cover today. Uh, I hope the videos are helping you study. Um, it's something you can just refer back to, another tool you can use besides just the book and those pictures that are in there. Um, if you guys have any specific questions, you can comment it below on this video or reach me at Alexander the Trainer um, on Instagram. A lot of people have messaged me in the past just saying how they passed and um, that's it's always cool to interact with people who are trying to become trainers and so on. So um, if you guys do have questions, make sure you hit me up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscription button and the bell notifications. And if there's any other kind of video you want me to make involving the NASM CPT, let me know. And if enough people talk about it, I'll for sure go ahead and do that. So uh, good luck and I'll see you next time. Thank you.